All right, uh, we have uh, a senior advocate of Nigeria, a former NBA president, uh, Ulisa Abakoba, joining us uh, remotely uh, from Lagos. Thank you so much for joining us on News Night tonight. Well, it, it came as a surprise, you know, to many Nigerians hearing from you that the EFCC, uh, you know, establishment is totally illegal. In fact, let me quote what you said. You said, the agency EFCC should not be in existence. So exactly uh, how uh, do you mean? Are you saying you don't support the anti-graft agencies, including the EFCC itself? Or what exactly do you have against uh, the EFCC? I don't have anything against the EFCC. And I think uh, when I did the press conference two days ago, uh, there was an over-concentration on the issue of whether the EFCC should or should not be in existence. So let me clarify. I support wholeheartedly, 100%, given my pedigree, the war on corruption. I think I support the federal government's desire to rid Nigeria of corruption. And every Nigerian would, of course, support that. And I obviously uh, think that Mr. Bauer, who is the non, first non-police officer to head the EFCC is doing a good job. He's a nice guy, he looks clean, he's a gentleman, and there's a lot that the EFCC has achieved, so I'll give them that credit. But the problem is what happens when the EFCC oversteps its bounds. That's my concern as a governance lawyer. And if you, if you notice recently, there's been a spate of problems with law enforcement and security agencies. First, there was the issue of uh, going to cut away Mr. Uh, Mephile. The other was the e INEC chair. We will not stand for people who want to break the law, merely because they are fighting corruption. So that's my point. Now, in my law practice, and I've been a lawyer for 45 years, I've received loads of complaints about the EFCC, loads and loads and loads. And so I, I thought it was necessary to test exactly what the powers of the EFCC is. And here's my you know, quick submission. The EFCC is established by an act of parliament, the National Assembly. The National Assembly derives its powers from the Constitution. And I will urge all Nigerians to look at section 4 of the Constitution because that's the, the key section that divides powers between the federal government and the state. So my problem seems to be that the National Assembly, not even the EFCC in fairness to them, the National Assembly is running amok, creating institutions and agencies that exceed their authority. Just last night you had a the director general of the NFIU just talking utter nonsense saying that people who break the law by withdrawing more than five million naira by March 31st will be liable to jail. That's, he has no authority to say that. All the NFU is, it's an information gathering organization. So when I saw that on your screen last night, I just had another big laugh. Here they go again. So what we want to do is to say Nigeria must be governed by the rule of law. You recall the Onogen story. No matter what the CJN at the time, Onogen did, the way it was hounded out was completely wrong. So my grasp with the EFCC is that they don't have power to do a number of things that they do. And the most recent decision of the Supreme Court supports my position. There was strong castigation of the role of the EFCC as if it were the super policeman of Nigeria. And that's what they cannot do. So I have made a couple of points. First, exactly what powers did the National Assembly donate to the EFCC? And would the, uh, is the EFCC exceeding those powers? Those are the questions that I would like to present to the courts. But I've also, in the course of researching my, my claim, which will go in next week, discovered that maybe the EFCC itself is confused because it's not easy to actually discern exactly what is the remit of authority of the EFCC under the Act. 
So in the press conference I held, which didn't come out in the media, they reported the one that said ESC should be scrapped. But I also said that I thought it would be necessary before going to file my claim to talk to Mr. Bauer if he's ready and to encourage him to review the act to see areas in which they may be going beyond their bounds. And that's exactly what I intend to do. Interesting, and I'm sure Nigerians will be following this case mm -hmm. with keen interest. For Senior Advocate of Nigeria, let's agree without conceding that you are right and that the ESCC has, uh, you know, stepped, overstepped its bounds and all of that. Do you not think, uh, and, and this is for those who argue for the case of morality, do you not think that with the level of corruption across board, including with the states, the local governments and organizations apart from the federal government, that the ESCC has become relevant to play this role in the state which you are questioning? Absolutely. I don't deny that the ESCC has the powerful role that it has. But unfortunately, Nigeria is governed by a constitution. Section 4 of the constitution divides the power to make laws between the federal government, rather the National Assembly and the State Assembly. And it assigns those powers under the exclusive and concurrent list. So the question, and I'm not the judge, so I would not prejudge what will be the outcome of the case. The question that will be presented to the court is, can the EFCC do what it does by charging people for stealing, charging people for offenses that appear to be state offenses, which is outside the remit of the power of the National Assembly? Or could the EFCC, in spite of the very well presented framework to investigate public funding stealing in a state, could the EFCC disregard that constitutional provision and step in? Those are very pertinent questions. There's no way Nigeria can develop if we don't obey the rule of law. So corruption is something that we must put on the table and fight. But you don't begin to burn people on the streets because of popular justice, because they've done the wrong things. The rule of law is what determines the growth of a de democratic government. So I would rather err on the side of caution. If I, ha if I will be seen as being against the war on corruption, merely because I say that the EFCC cannot do what it does, then so that's the consequence of speaking out on issues of you know, great public interest. Somebody must talk. Right. If you allow the EFCC to do what it does, if you allow the DSS, and you, I'm sure you know that the DSS went to the judges' quarters and, and cut them in the night, is that, is that right? Mainly because there's an allegation of corruption. So the rule of law is no respect of persons. And the EFCC, the ICPC, all the agencies are bound to follow the rule of law. And what binds us is the Constitution. If you break the Constitution, I, Ulisa Bakawa, will attack you for it. So now, the constitution that you talk about is the constitution, which is the ground norm. Is it flawed? Is that where the problem is? So how do we move forward from this uh, seeming uh, tight place where the rule of law is actually flouted at all levels of governance, even the citizenry? How do we bring back the rule of law as the foundation and, you know, that... Uh, a uh, pedestal on which uh, we do whatever we do in public and in private? That's a good question. And I think it's a question that we should pose to the presidential candidates. Initially, I wasn't very well aware of the depth of disruption that the Constitution contained until I began to study for this case. The present constitution is taking us nowhere. That is a clear statement I would like to make. So we need to have our presidential candidates, whether it's on party A, B, C, tell us exactly what they'd like to do. Here's the way I analyze and dramatize the constitution. There is this snake called the boa constrictor. So the federal government is like a boa constrictor restricting and compressing the states because it has far too much powers. On the other hand, you have the states constricting the local governments 
because it has far too much powers. As, I t as we speak, Lagos State Government passed a law removing the powers of local governments in Lagos State to do the things that the Constitution says they should do. Can you imagine that? So in other words, we don't have a local government system in the state. So unless we absolutely bring down the Constitution, and my analogy is that we have a bungalow. Nigeria is like a bungalow, and the architect comes and tells the owner, you've got to bring down this structure if you want to build a 20-story building. The Constitution has to go. It's the only way we can hope to have political and economic development. This Constitution is flawed, and that's why we have all these problems, EFCC, ICPC, and everywhere. Great. Uh, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Olisa Agbakoba, we must thank you for your time on the news tonight. Like I said, we'll be following the thank case, Kenley.